Hey everyone, Chris Hoffman here and today we're gonna learn the grooves of the Brock metal band Tool and their drummer Danny Carey. He is known for his polyrhythmic playing, his use of odd time signatures and his profound understanding of time and rhythm. And we also filmed a recreating iconic drum sound video on Danny Carey. So make sure to check that out. But for today, let's dive into three tool songs to look for these qualities in Danny's drumming. And if you find them difficult to learn like myself, then we'll practice them together right here, right now in this video. So grab your sticks and let's get started. So Schism is the first song and let's listen to the intro and verse groove of the song. Really interesting drum groove and first thing that comes to mind, Danny Carey is playing an open snare. The snare wires are off, hired openings in some weird positions of the bar and all I know is that we have some mixed meters going on, meaning a sequence of different time signatures. It's definitely not 4-4 and if we want to find out the time signature, the first thing we got to do is find out the speed at which we are counting it and that will be the bottom number of our time signature. 99% of the time the bottom number is either 4, 8 or 16 and 4 means we're counting in the speed of quarter notes, 8 means we're counting in eighth notes da, 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 da. and 16 means we're counting in the speed of 16th notes. Da, 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 da. So let's try to feel the, the schism groove in quarter notes. All right, feels like we can count to six, but it doesn't really work that well because we have that sort of hiccup right in between those quarter notes. And let's try eighth notes and see if our counting lines up with the music. One, two, three, four. So we can count to five for one bar and count to seven in the next following bar. And these are the top numbers of our time signature. So we have five eight plus seven eight. And let's count this out loud together one more time and try to listen to the bass and the hi-hat because they play these triplets in unison and mark the beginning of the bar. So, and that can be our orientation to find beat one. One. And now that we've got that sorted out, I wrote out the notation for you at the bottom of the screen. You see a four bar groove. The first and third bar are the same, so let's practice this at a slow practice tempo. Five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. An important point here, if you play the triplets hand to hand like Danny Carey, you'll be playing beat one with your left hand. So pay attention to that and take your time to practice it at a very slow tempo for a much longer period of time than we can do simultaneously in a YouTube video. And by the way, the metronome app I'm using here is called Polynome and it's great for practicing polyrhythms and mixed meters and maybe I should uh, present you my favorite metronome apps in one of the next videos. So let me know in the comments if you're interested. But let's get back to our groove and here's how it sounds in the original tempo. Five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, 
The second groove example is the opening tom groove of the song Ticks and Leeches. It's another odd meter groove, pretty fast, and the time signature is 7-4. Danny Carey is playing alternating 16th notes with a bunch of accents on the toms while keeping a constant backbeat on beats 3 and 7. So let's listen to it one more time and try to clap with me on beats 3 and 7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, well done. Let's practice all instruments at once at a slow tempo and in two separate parts. Let's play it from the beginning until beat four. Left hand stays on the rag tom the whole time. Only the right hand is moving between the floor tom and the snare drum. Five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we start on beat four, and counting is important. Counting is like our compass and our guide to where we are. One, two, three, four, five. And now it's time to put these two pieces together and still practice it at our practice tempo. Here we go. Five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. The jump to the original tempo is quite big and your strategy would be to increase the tempo in steps of maybe 5 or 10 BPM and stay there until the groove feels good, like your regular And for the sake of the video, I'll skip these steps and try the original tempo. One, two, three. The last song for today is Eulogy and I chose the bridge at 6 minutes and 35 seconds into the song. Alright, what a cool song and believe it or not, it's actually a groove in 4-4 four, four. and when we play the bass drum and snare drum, Without the height, it becomes clear we're in a 4 4 environment. One, two, three, four. 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 What makes it so exciting and unique is the 4 over 3 polyrhythm created by the 3 note grouping in the hi hat, and it sounds like this. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The next step is to practice the hi hat while keeping the backbeat on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Now adding the bass drum to it, the final and the full groove sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
Hopefully you enjoyed diving deeper into these Danny Carey drum parts and you take some of them to your kit and start working on them yourself. And with complex music like Tool, the only way to get there is to practice very strategically and to count out loud. And I hope this lesson gave you some ideas and inspiration on how to proceed with your favorite songs that you want to learn. And maybe there's a drum part you would like to see broken down as well. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time. Take care everyone and bye bye.